As former American Idol star Kelly Clarkson took the Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album for her disc Stronger, the star gave a shout out to the R&B singer who had performed earlier on the CBS broadcast, saying, Miguel, I don't know who the hell you are, but we need to sing together. I mean, good God, that was the sexiest damn thing I've ever seen. For many, Miguel had already become a fixture on the urban music scene, but it was his animated performance at the 2013 Grammys that made the pop world stand up and take notice. In this film, you'll get up close and personal with a performer who is being tooted as the heir to the throne, occupied for decades by the original performer, recognized by one name, Prince. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and come backstage with us as we profile the life and times of Miguel, the man that so many are dubbing the heir to the throne. Miguel Jantel Pimentel, born October 23, 1985, in St. Pedro, California, who performs under the stage name Miguel, is an American recording artist, songwriter, and producer. Signed to Jive Records in 2007, Miguel released his debut album, All I Want Is You, in November of 2010. Although it was under-promoted and performed poorly upon its release, the album became a sleeper hit and helped Miguel garner commercial standing. After Jive's dissolution in 2011, he moved to RCA Records and released his second album, Kaleidoscope Dream, in 2012 to critical acclaim. Miguel Jantel Pimentel was born and raised in San Pedro, Los Angeles, California. He is one of two sons born to a Mexican father and an African-American mother. Miguel's parents divorced when he was eight years old. At a young age, Miguel was introduced to the older R&B his mother listened to and his father's musical tastes, including funk, hip-hop, jazz, and classic rock. At age five, Miguel wanted to become a dancer. However, at 13, he began pursuing a career in music. At 14, he was writing songs and developing ideas with a four-track recorder he took from his uncle. Oh man, I was talkative in class. I was always getting in trouble for talking to classmates. But I was a good kid, you know? Um, it was important to my mother and my father that I got good grades and, and I could only go to the studio if I, you know, kept my grades up. So it was, you know, it was kind of a win-win, you know? I kept my grades up and, and got to work. Man, growing up as a teenager, my first, my first job I cleaned pools for a summer. I was a pool cleaner. And that was actually a fun job. And I made pretty good money. That was that was a good summer. Um, and then after that, like I took on a steady job even throughout like the school year as a tutor for this um, for this tutoring company. And I tutored like, you know, kindergarten to tenth grade. And that was that was a pretty that was really cool watching kids like, you know, improve and whatnot. It was a, it was a good first job. But, you know, since then I I was like a bank teller. Um, at my lowest, lowest point, I was an uh, extended car warranty salesman, and that was tough. That was tough, but you know, do what you gotta do. In ninth grade, Miguel was introduced by a mutual friend to a member of production company Drop Squad, and he subsequently spent the rest of high school learning his way around a recording studio before seeking a record deal. Miguel signed a production deal with Drop Squad in 2000. In 2004, he was signed by independent record label Black Ice and started working on his studio album, Young and Free. It was scheduled to be released on November 30, 2006, but was ultimately shelved. Black Ice released the single, Get Your Hands Up, with a video debut on 106 and Park, but Miguel decided to change his sound and image and walked away from Black Ice Records. He later said in an interview for LA Weekly, We shot a video, and if you ever see it, you will laugh your ass off. I have a fitted hat on and a white t-shirt and baggy jeans. I was 19 years old and was the first time anyone had ever given me money.
For nearly a year, Miguel's manager at the time submitted several songs to music mogul Mark Pitts. After receiving a song titled, Sure Thing, which Miguel described as a highly personal record that no one was ever supposed to hear, Pitts scheduled a meeting with Miguel in October 2007. The following month, Miguel signed a recording contract with Jive Records. Miguel recalled that the signing of his contract took place in a very small room in a very small office, in a small corner of the building at Jive. After being signed, he recorded his debut album, All I Want Is You, but was sued by Black Ice for breach of contract. Consequently, his album was not released for two years. That album was a huge learning experience. I left the marketing of my album and me as an artist up to the discretion of the label. They marketed me like the typical R&B artist, which I can't really blame them for. But that's what they know. But that's not what my lifestyle was. For the following three years, he contributed to Usher's Here I Stand and Raymond vs. Raymond, as well as Asher Roth's Asleep in the Bread Isle and Music Soul Child's If You Leave. Miguel also released Mischief, the mixtape. He explained that the title referred to his attempt to tell people that there is an alternative to getting sort of the same thing. After his protracted contract dispute with Black Ice was settled, All I Want Is You was released in November 2010. It initially performed poorly, debuting at number 109 on the Billboard 200, on 11,000 copies sold, and was under-promoted by Jive amid the label's dissolution. Man, first big check, I'll be honest with you, I blew it on legal fees, man. I, I, I spent all my money on legal fees. Um, and that's when I kind of like went broke again. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was like literally in a matter of a month and a half, dude. It was, it was kind of lame, but um, you know, here we are. Most important is finding what you're passionate about. Finding what you truly love, you know? And starting from there, because there's a saying in the Bible, right? Um, Faith without works is dead. But it's the same principle. You can know that you love something, but if you don't apply yourself and do it, it kind of doesn't mean anything, you know what I mean? So it takes that extra step of pursuing your passion and living it. And that's a lot easier said than done, man, because there's so many people who have to provide, you know, for themselves, for their families, and so on and so forth. And it hinders them from pursuing their dreams or their goals or, and whatnot. So I know how hard that can be, but um, I think that's where true success kind of really comes from, you know? Um, not only economically, but I'm saying as human beings, you know what I'm saying? Personal success, like self-accomplishment, feeling accomplished and feeling fulfilled comes from knowing your passion and pursuing it. And I think um, hard work to accompany that, you know what I mean, is, is just, you can't lose, man. Uh, my name is James Kidd. I'm performing tonight as well. I'm an opening act for Tank. And uh, what I'm working on right now is my project. Um, it's called it's called Guarantee. So I'm working on that. I have a single coming out here soon. So, you know, that's just me, you know. My dream collaboration would definitely be Miguel. That is, that is, that is the best one, I think. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I just like his style. You know everything that he brings to the table. You know the style, the music. Oh, uh, you can check me out on Instagram, YouTube, and it's all your boy kid. The album's title track attained radio play while Miguel toured as a supporting act for Trey Songs and Usher. Its following two singles, Sure Thing and Quickie, performed well under the charts. After falling off the chart for three weeks, All I Want Is You became a sleeper hit as it re-entered the Billboard 200 and climbed to the chart for 22 weeks before peaking at number 37 on May 14, 2011. It ultimately spent 45 weeks on the chart and sold 404,000 copies in the U.S. From 2012 to present, label change, second album, and controversy. After Jive was shut down and absorbed by RCA Records, Miguel was moved to RCA, where Pitts was named president of Urban Music and received a new marketing team. His second studio album, Kaleidoscope Dream, was released on October 2, 2012 to critical acclaim. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200, selling 71,000 copies in its first week. As of February 2013, Kaleidoscope Dream had sold 322,000 copies according to Nielsen SoundScan. 
In February 2013, he released a politically driven video for the song, Candles in the Sun, the 11th and last song on the album. In August 2013, the new single Beautiful with Mariah Carey became Miguel's third million seller in the USA, following Sure Thing and Adorn. During an energetic performance of Adorn at the Billboard Music Awards on May 19th, Miguel failed in an attempt to leap across the stage, injuring two audience members in the process. Barely missing the stage, Miguel landed on two women, hooking his right leg over one and knocking the other into the stage. The incident became an immediate internet sensation and has been satirized in numerous internet memes and gifs. It has also been the subject of controversy, with the show's producers claiming that they had denied the singer permission to attempt the leap, while Miguel's representatives have countered that no objections were raised during earlier rehearsals. Kiari Shaw, one of the two women involved, had since claimed she had suffered a traumatic head injury that was not sufficiently attended to by show organizers. Right now R&B is filled with so many people singing songs that sound like other songs. But Miguel is letting his art rule his whole flow, and that's the best place for an artist to be. To me he kind of feels like Prince, where he's doing this eclectic blend, but still coming back to focus songs. Miguel identifies himself as part of the new wave of R&B artists that include Frank Ocean, The Weeknd, and Al Farner. About.com editor Mark Edward Nero characterizes his music as eclectic, artsy R&B pop. Miguel cites musicians Prince, David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, Freddie Mercury, Phil Collins, Donny Hathaway, The Notorious B.I.G., and Kanye West as influences in addition to expressing his admiration for Stevie Wonder, John Lennon, and Diane Warren. Miguel revealed his desire to have worked with James Brown, who he considers the last innovator for me when it comes to soul. In addition to singing, Miguel also plays the guitar. Miguel incorporates R&B, funk, hip-hop, rock, and electronic styles into his music. Miguel described his sound as nostalgic in a sense that it's familiar. It's shocking, edgy, energizing. In an interview with Paper Magazine, he regarded his music as fly, funkadelic, intergalactic, hip-hop meets sexy, orgasmic, crazy, dope shit. Miguel is often compared to Babyface and Prince. His vocals are influenced by classic rock bands such as The Beatles, Queen, The Police, and Def Leppard. Brian McManus of The Village Voice writes that Marvin Gaye, Prince, and his comparison, Van Morrison, all linger in his voice. Some of the things I love about Miguel are, I mean, I think it's, first of all, I think it's really cool how he's half Mexican and half African American because I love mixed people in the entertainment industry. I mixed myself, so I think it's really cool when there's different heritages in the industry. It just adds a little bit of flavor. And, um, oh, and his birthday is coming up October 23rd, so happy early birthday! <laughs> um, and I just think he's a really good singer. I love his lyrics. His voice is obviously amazing. Um, and, I mean, he even has won a Grammy for one of his songs, which is huge. I mean, not a lot of people can say they've won a Grammy. And he's been nominated so many times for several award shows, so that's pretty cool. Songs. Oh gosh, this is a really hard one. They're all so good. Um, well, obviously, it probably Adorn. I think who doesn't like that Miguel song? It's so good. And oh, and then the one with um, Mariah Carey. Um, beautiful. I mean, first of all, to make a song with Mariah Carey, that's huge. I think that's so cool. She has such an amazing voice too. So a collaboration between Miguel and Mariah Carey. I mean, you knew it was going to turn out to be amazing, and which it is. So, um, they're both just really good. I mean, I think they're really good breakup songs, too. Or if you're just having a bad day, just listen to one of those two songs. I mean, they're, they're perfect. They're very uplifting, and his voice just makes you melt. So, <laughs> that's all is a plus. Um, but yeah, those would probably be my two favorite songs from the girl. Singer, songwriter, and producer Miguel, born Miguel Jontel Pimentel, is 
spent a handful of years behind the scenes and flirted with the mainstream before he released his first hit single and became one of pop R&B's most significant artists. When he was 16, the San Pedro, California native was involved with Drop Squad, a production company. Three years later, he was offered a slot in Fatty Coup and even appeared in the R&B group's BT reality show, but he turned the position down and eventually signed with Black Ice Label. In 2006, Get Your Hands Up was issued a single and its video aired on BET. An album Young and Free was planned for release with distribution from Universal, but it was never issued. By that point, he was becoming increasingly known in the underground through his collaborative work with Blue, Exile, and Daz Iku. Miguel signed a solo deal with Jive in 2007 and continued to work with an area of underground and major label artists including Johnson & Johnson and Asher Roth. He co-wrote Jahim's Finding My Way Back and was nominated for the Best R&B Song Grammy Award. In 2010, Usher's Raymond vs. Raymond, featuring two songs he co-wrote, was issued just prior to his own All I Want Is You, a top 10 hit on Billboard's Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart. The album of the same title followed that November and reached the top 10 of the R&B Albums chart, as well as the top 40 of the Billboard 200. Miguel was once signed to an indie label, Black Ice, but he wanted more. He wrote his own songs and crafted Sure Thing when he was at the lowest point of his life. He was at the time without a recording contract, no girlfriend, and had to make a living selling extended car warranties. His manager at that time submitted Sure Thing and some other songs to music producer Mark Pitts. After a meeting, Miguel got his big break by being signed to Jive Records in 2007. Miguel spent the next few years working for the albums of Usher, Music Soulchild, and Asher Roth. Through Pitts and the label, he was introduced to J. Cole, who would later contributed raps to his debut single, All I Want Is You. Long story short, Miguel dropped his first album also titled All I Want Is You in November 2010. It slowly climbed the Hot 200 chart to number 37 after the release of second single, Sure Thing. One of my favorite Miguel songs is Adorn. Uh, I think it's really, it's just so different. It, it kind of brings back like a 90s, 2000, early 2000 feel to it. It's one of those classic songs that never gets old. Um, the production is fabulous, the lyrics, and it, it just makes you happy and it puts you in that romantic mood and puts you in that romantic place where you dream about being with the person you really want to be with every time you hear that song. I love it. And I also love Beautiful with Mariah Carey because Mariah Carey is my favorite female artist of all time and together both of them are just fantastic. Their voices are like totally blended together really well. I would compare Miguel, even though there's no comparison to Michael Jackson, but he's definitely been compared to him for his vocal style and performances. Um, I think he's definitely going to go down as one of the greats in music history because he has a really catchy type of a voice and he's amazing. He's, he's one of the best. I, I personally think Miguel is one of the best R&B male artist out today and he has a big future in the music business. I see Miguel branching out into movies possibly like uh, Ludacris, T.I. Both of them started off with music but they ended up doing films and their movie careers came just as, became just as popular as their music careers and Miguel has definitely got that look, uh, the Hollywood type of look that'll get him a lot of film roles. He has a great personality, he's really down to earth and he's a great vocalist and lyricist and he's great as well with other artists. He also stands out with whoever he performs with and if he's on a compilation album his voice always stands out because it's very unique and he has a great style about him and a really good look and I think he has a really big future in music. The date was August 15th the year 2013. The following story was reported by Michael Rothman of ABC News. Singer-songwriter Miguel, 27, was arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol early this morning, ABC News has confirmed. 
The Kaleidoscope Dream singer was stopped in his BMW X6 at 2.15 a.m. today for speeding and tinted windows, a spokeswoman for the West LAPD told ABC News station KABC. The Grammy winner's sobriety test revealed a blood alcohol level of 0 .10, which is beyond the 0 .08 legal limit in California, police said. He was cooperative and released on $5,000 bail a few hours later around 5 a.m., officials added. <laughs> Summer on Smash is one of those records that I really can't really give an explanation for. Um, I was in New York working on my album, and I got an email from Swiss to see if I was in the city. And, and I was like, yeah, I'm out here, what's up? And he was like, um, we're wrapping up this Nas album and we would both love to have you. Can you come through? It was perfect timing because I had just taken a break. You know, I was hungry. So as soon as my food came, I hopped in a cab and, and got to the studio. And, um, you know, he sat me down and was like, yo, Nas is upstairs, is wrapping this other joint, he's gonna come down, but I wanna play this record that we really love, see if you'd be down to rock on it. And uh, he played me the Summer on Smash beat. And Nas's verses are on, and I'm sitting there, I played it like 30 times, I kid you not, man. I played it 30 times, and I couldn't hear any singing on it. You know, I was like, yo, Swiss, I don't know if this is gonna work, man. I appreciate, you know, you wanting to include me, but. I feel like I would just be cumbersome on the, on the record trying to sing, like it just doesn't feel right. He was like, well just sit with it and vibe out and just do whatever comes naturally. I said, okay. So he left and about 15, 30 minutes later he came back and, and there was a verse on there and I was like, before you listen to this Swiss, I'm telling him like, wait a second, just hold on, before I play this for you, I'm gonna warn you, first of all, don't fucking laugh. Second of all, I'm rapping. And he was like, oh, word? And he was like, no, I'm not gonna laugh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to it. So I played it, he said, hold up, hold up, hold up. He played it back, he went back, he was like, hold up, played it back. He's listening to it, uh, listening to it, plays it back. He was like, yo, this shit is crazy. He's like, this is out of here. He's like, showtime. And once he said that, it was a rap. And, and here we are. Interestingly, Nas and I, I mean, we, we, are, we had mutual friends before, so we have, like, we've, that's, that's like Big Brother, you know what I mean? We, we, we hadn't worked before, but um, he was actually like literally in the last like two days before having the master, so he was like knocking some stuff out, and I had to get back to my session. So it just kind of worked out. I came out, knocked it out, and um, you know, here we are. Shout out to Swiss and Nas, Big Bros, appreciate you. Miguel won a Grammy Award this past year for Best R&B Song for Adorn. In addition to the win, he was nominated in four other categories, including Song of the Year and Best Rap Song. His arrest report, obtained by ABC News, said the singer, whose full name is Miguel Pimentel, was scheduled to be back in court September 9th in Los Angeles. MTV reported that Miguel was, as he put it, still in love with Kaleidoscope, and while he was indeed working on new material, he was not ready to release another album. Miguel's sophomore album, Kaleidoscope Dream, makes latest swoon and has already spawned jams like Adorn and Do You, as well as his latest single, How Many Drinks. And Miguel isn't stopping there. He already has big plans for the album's visual rollout. He hoped he could drop a video for every song on it, but he admits that goal might be a bit lofty. I have a couple ideas for what's next. If I could, I would shoot a video for every song on the album, he told MTV News last week at the Time 100 Gala. You know, we'll see. We'll just kind of roll with the punches. With so many people jumping on the Miguel bandwagon, including longtime crush Mariah Carey, who recently recruited him to appear on her next single, Beautiful, some folks might be wondering when more of his new music is on the horizon. While he's thought about his next album, he's not slated to drop music anytime soon. I'm still creating every day. I don't think I'm necessarily focused on the next album. I'm still so in love with this album, he said. But I'm creating all the time. When we get to that bend, I think we'll be ready. Until then, fans can just continue playing Adorn on repeat. Adorn has opened a majority of the doors, and I think performing that song at the Grammys had a huge impact in just creating awareness, he said of the February performance featuring Wiz Khalifa. It's just one of those things. It's like you can never really pick, he continued about choosing singles. I'm not good at picking those songs. 
So you have to give it to Mark Pitts, the president of Urban Music RCA Records, who really believed in the song. And my fans chose it, really. But Mark Pitts is my advocate at the label, who signed me and he really believed in this record to be a single. And it's been the most impactful record of my career. He always likes to say, you can never change direction if you want to direct the change. I think something that I really appreciate about Miguel's early life would be that, first of all, he had a vision. He started at such an early age. I think he knew he wanted to be a singer at the age 13. I know before that he wanted to be a dancer, which is also really cool because um, I danced when I was younger too. I did ballet, jazz, tap, all that kind of stuff. And um, I think being a dancer is goes hand in hand with being a singer because it's all about your performance which he definitely has and so he started off as a dancer when he was young and then at age 13 he just knew he wanted to be a singer and he had a vision like he knew he wanted to be an R&B singer what kind of music he wanted to do and he really worked hard at that and I think it was in 2000 when he signed with an independent record label I don't think things really worked out with that because now he signs signed with a huge label, but um, he signed with someone, you know, he worked on music and he didn't like that vision, so he scrapped that and started on something else and he really just stuck to what he wanted to do, um, which I appreciate because a lot of artists will cop out and just do whatever their label wants them to do, but, you know, Miguel does Miguel. He does exactly who he is. He makes his own lyrics, and um, I think that's really cool. It was Sunday, May 19th at the 2013 Billboard Awards. Miguel made a new friend at the Billboard Music Awards on Sunday night during his performance of Adorn after he miscalculated a long jump from the stage and landed on two fans, leaving at least one of them bruised. The dramatic collision came at the tail end of his performance, with his right leg landing on top of one woman's head and his left side bashing another fan's arm. The singer finished his performance while splayed on the ground as the young audience behind looked on in a mixture of awe and confusion. Immediately following the incident, Miguel emerged backstage with one of the fans who was holding an ice pack on her arm as the two were interviewed by Billboard's editorial director, Bill Word, writes. Well, I think it's kind of clear what happened, he said, looking visibly embarrassed. But I'm very happy to bring my new friend Kiati. We just met. Unfortunately, we did not meet under the best circumstances, but I think we're okay. The young woman seemed to take the injury in stride, looking thrilled to be backstage with Miguel and even dropping a pun when asked what she thought of him. I adorn him, she said. Miguel went on to say that he may have bit off a bit more than he could chew with the improvised jump, which immediately went viral, inspiring Vines and GIFs the world over as the award show carried on. The crazy thing is, when you're performing and you're just kind of into it, you never know where it's gonna go and where you're gonna go with it, and how that might turn out, he said. So this is one of the less favorable moments. I'm excited to like promote that and um, just get back, just get back to work, you know? Are there any interesting collaborations that we can expect from you? None that I can disclose at this time, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of keeping everything really quiet, you know, I just, I, I like surprising people and um, what I will say is that whatever you do here will be unexpected, yeah. Okay, I'm really, really loving the Lotus Flower Bomb. I'm, I'm in my car, Thank repeat, you. No. loving the tune. Yeah, yeah. How did you guys come together for that? Wale, uh, Wale really made that happen, I'll be honest with you. Um, Wale actually uh, knew about my music early on, like during MySpace, so he actually reached out during that time when MySpace is like the premier social networking site, and uh, it's just like the perfect time now, you know? He, he had the right song, and I guess I had the right voice for it. <laughs> cool. Are the, who are you looking forward to see perform tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, uh, Frankie Beverly and Maze, for real. I think that's going to be really cool. Chris Brown always kills it. Uh, everyone. I just love watching live performances. It doesn't matter. Okay, can you tell us a bit about your style? It's very, very interesting, very unique and different. So, can you tell us a bit about that? I mean, there's not much to tell. I guess it's kind of simple, you know? I'm wearing slacks and a t-shirt. <laughs> I live in L.A., so this is kind of like my backyard. I feel like, you know... Just get to chill. <laughs> so, do you pick out your own clothes, or do you have stylists? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, do. I put my I put my clothes together. Um, I do work. I collaborate with a really good friend of mine. Her name is Jasmine Benjamin. 
um, and she pretty much like goes and pulls exactly. We collaborate. We just geek out on like fashion and what it is we want to, you know, project. And she just basically pulls it, brings it to me, and then we just kind of go through it. Yeah, yeah. She's amazing. Amazing. Miguel is a big social media fan who often posts personal and intimate details of his life to his over 750,000 Facebook fans. He also has a strong Twitter following with just under 700,000 followers on Twitter. It was bound to happen with multiracial parents and an eclectic style complete with animated productions, athletic dance moves, and an ability to transcend musical labels. Man, how does anyone compare to Prince? Really? Miguel asked rhetorically. Sitting behind the scenes just minutes before his sold out performance at New York's SOB's, the singer was humbled to be mentioned in the same sentence as the music icon who he credited as a big influence on his career. In an exclusive interview with BET.com, the All I Want Is You singer talked about how Prince and other musicians have inspired him. There's so many layers to his artistry. You know what I mean? Writer, virtuoso, and genius. Really, when it comes to him being a musician, he said. Miguel goes on to cite Bruce Lee, David Bowie, Saul Williams, and John Lennon as people who had had an effect on his artistry. Every one of those artists, in their own right, was revolutionary. Those are my influences, he says. But for Miguel, being compared to Prince is an overstatement. It's cool for people to pick parts of him that they see in me, because he's one of my hugest influences. I think it's cool that you see it if you do, but I would never compare myself to him. Miguel says he's offended for Prince and gives a stellar live performance. Posted on October 2, 2012 by Taryn Finley. The stage was set, the audience was ready, and the epileptic probably shouldn't have been near when Miguel kicked off his Kaleidoscope Dream Tour in the district last week at the Howard Theater. There are concerts and there are shows. Concerts are fun and leave the audience wanting to listen to the artists on the drive home while shows have better reception and participation from the crowd and leave them wanting more. Miguel put on a show. The stage production was a light spectacle. The dance moves were swift, the vocals were authentic, the crowd was energetic from beginning to end. Backstage, several people commented on his stage presence, being reminiscent of Prince the 80s phenomenon who mixed genres, dressed in androgynous yet fashionable manner, and carried a vocal range like no other. Comments like, He's the modern day Prince, and he reminds me of Prince a lot, flew around the room as if Miguel was the legendary recording artist's son. I get offended for him, said the RCA Records recording artist, shortly after his performance at his album listening party. In no way have I covered the kind of ground or just even been around the experience and influence like he is," he said in an interview with Raheem Devon. Though too humble to take to credit for being as great as Prince, humility is applaudable. He says that the people who've made the comparison may not be as deeply emerged in R&B music to know how big of a claim they've made. Um, other than Mariah Carey, I really believe that he would do a fantastic duet with uh, somebody like Chris Brown. I think both of their voices would be really great together. And also Neo. I think with the R&B feel, with their type of singing style, I think blending two of those type of voices together, but two different styles would sound really good because Miguel is his own person and the way he sings. And then there's other artists that obviously inspired him growing up. So putting them both together would be really amazing and I think it'd be make a really good hit song and a great performance. Definitely, I think for next year's Grammys, I'd love to see him perform with Mariah Carey or Chris Brown or even Rihanna, really. I think they'd be great together as well on a song. I'm really excited because I got the official 2013 Grammys nomination CD that features Miguel with Adorn and I got that from the executive producer of the Grammys, Neil Portnow, um, so this is definitely a prized possession of mine and it's got a lot of great music on it including Adorn and it's got the remix with Wiz Khalifa on it. So this is it, track number 11, Adorn. Okay, so I love that Miguel is from San Pedro, California. 
Um, he's a local boy from LA and I think it's really great that he's come this far with his music because there is a lot of competition in the music business in LA but it's proven that with his uh, hard work ethic and great performance skills he's really made a name for himself and he never gave up on his dream and I think that's a really important thing and he's a great role model to other artists that are looking to come out and do something with their music and he's now up there with the best of them and he's only 27 so um, I think it's fabulous that he is doing big things in music and representing LA. I love the music video for Beautiful, uh, Mariah Carey looks beautiful, Miguel looks great. Their voices were really definitely compatible uh, and the video is great and I think it definitely gave a new dimension to having a song with two collaborations like Mariah and Miguel because it was definitely bringing back Mariah's old sound and also giving Miguel even more recognition by featuring on a song with Mariah Carey, who's the biggest selling female artist of all time. And I thought it was a really happy song and it was really popular and it did really well on the music charts. So I think Beautiful is one of the best songs and a great video. Miguel also shared his distaste for the rules that have been placed on R&B. Somehow we've forgotten R&B is a genre and not a stereotype, he said. Miguel described his sophomore album as a reintroduction to his music. With more creative layaway on Kaleidoscope Dream, the musician explores different instrumentals with his lyrical content, just as a painter's brush would explore a canvas. We've lost the reality of what genres are, he explained. They're not a set of guidelines. In Kaleidoscope Dream, the listener can tell immediately where Miguel is trying to color outside of the lines. On tracks like Use Me, Candles in the Sun, hit single Adorn, and the title track of the album Kaleidoscope Dream, all of which he performed in his show that night. A highlight of Miguel's night at the Howard Theatre had to be his live performance of Pussy Is Mine. The ladies went into a wild screaming frenzy while the fellas could only stand there with a grain of salt on their shoulders. Sorry fellas. The crooner gave a little more than a serenade to a lucky lady in the audience. She admitted the kitty cat wasn't his, however. Perhaps the definitive word on the Miguel Prince comparisons come from Hilary Hughes, who wrote the following in the music newsletter. The article was titled, Can We Please Stop Comparing Miguel to Prince? Monday, April 15, 2013. I think it's really cool how Miguel has gotten so many awards and, you know, he's been recognized for his work on such huge platforms such as, um, I know he has won a Grammy. He's been nominated for several Grammys and several different award shows, but he actually won a Grammy for the song Adorn, which is one of my favorites. And um, yeah, he won a Grammy for Best R&B Song of the Year, which is amazing. I mean, so many top artists are in that category and he's competing against so many artists in general. I mean just to be recognized at the Grammys for something at such a young age, he's in his 20s. That's amazing. I mean people hope and dream for Grammys way later in life and he won it so early. So I think that's amazing. And his album, which one was it? Kaleidoscope Dream, that got, I think within the first week of its release, it debuted like number three on uh, Billboard's Top 200. That's amazing. I mean, that never happens. So number three within the first week of release for an R&B album too. You would think that some pop album, like I don't know, Britney Spears would win or something, but it was Miguel. That's just phenomenal. So he's been recognized a lot and for good reason. And I know his awards are gonna keep coming. and. Hopefully more Grammys in the future, more amazing albums. I know I can't wait, so just very proud fan. When you rake in the second highest ratings for Saturday Night Life this season and Mariah Carey's gushing about how much she loves you, you know you're doing something right. And that's exactly how things went down for Miguel and Vince Vaughn's too, but come on, on the show this week. The addition of harder, grittier, kick-the-doors-down guitar to Miguel's velvet voice 
and textbook R&B breakdowns made for a polarizing SNL spot, one that brought about a handful of Prince comparisons on Twitter. We'll get into that. And some well-deserved attention for the man who gave us Kaleidoscope Dream. That record none of us have been able to get off our minds since last September. Launching into a hard-hitting, metal riff-ridden rendition of Adorn, Miguel skirted those high notes and made that belt look like a child's play as he soared over the course of Kaleidoscope Dream's breakout hit. Additional points go to the guitarist for his incredible O faces throughout, as I'm sure we can all relate on a Jesus Christ Miguel's voice just impregnated me level. I might be coming from a bit of a rock bias in that reverb is my boyfriend, but I thoroughly enjoyed the edge those solos provided. And to hear a hit depart so clearly from the popular song recording was a refreshing change on the SNL stage. For comparison, here's the video for Adorn in all its straight up R&B glory. How Many Drinks was up next, and though the slow burn of a start was a bit of a head scratcher, or head herder, it drove straight into the clutches of a frenzied, confusing, and yet totally enjoyable, perfect storm of soulful crooning and hard shreds. He didn't hit a single bad note, jagged genre jumping aside, and that walk off at the end, that shit was a flawless exit. Man, crazy, I was just watching this video I took of the session from Jamaica that we, when we did Where's the Fun and Forever, and, and the song was originally for her album, and it didn't make it, and I was, I was in love with it, so sorry, Alicia, I was kind of happy you didn't put the joint on your album because I really wanted it, but um, it just, it just was one of those songs that I, I was in love with. It's a very personal, you know, concept, you know, an idea and thought. And so she was gracious enough to let us use her vocals that she, that we kind of did during the, like, demoing the song and um, songs on the album. So if you haven't got the album, Gladys Go Dream, get it on there. Uh, Alicia Keys isn't technically featured, but if you listen to Where's the Fun and Forever, you might hear her voice um, here and there. Oh, man. You know, I'll name a band called Grizzly Bear. Mm -hmm. They just dropped an album um, this year um, called Shields. And um, I love all their albums before this one as well, but I think it would be really dope. Their sense of like harmony is, is incredible. You know what, man? There's a time where I, I really was hurt that I wasn't nominated. You know what I mean? And, and there's a few people who know that. I'm, I'm pretty vocal about my, my opinions and whatnot. But coming full circle and being in the position where, I, where we are nominated this time, I'll tell you what I've learned in between is that it's so much more about just having an audience. And the fact that we found a broader audience this time around, just, you know, is the biggest blessing I could ever ask for. And, and yes, the Grammys are the highest honor a musician can you know, be considered for, and I'm extremely blessed, but um, I think more than anything, I'm just happy to, to be building a larger fan base with every album, or with this album, you know what I'm saying, hopefully with the next album, and with all these shows that we're doing and all that, I'm just I'm incredibly humbled, so um, yeah, I appreciate the fans out there, man, thank you for paying attention, that's all uh, an artist, whatever medium could ask for, and shout out to the Grammys for having us, of course, I'm so honored so beyond honored. It's my first time, so, um, yeah. So guys, we have to address something. Miguel and Prince can both give fallen angels a run for their money when it comes to throwing some heavenly high notes out there, but that's where the similarities end. All because the dude has a haircut you don't understand, and they happen to have the same skin color, doesn't mean they gotta be compared to each other every five minutes. Maybe it's the guitar, maybe it's the oozing sex appeal, maybe it's the questionable sartorial choices, but ah, just let Miguel be Miguel. He doesn't have to be Prince, and we like it like that. Any way you slice it, a comparison to Prince means you have major potential. The wild card is fulfilling that potential, and that's the challenge for the ambitious kid from San Pedro, California. But all initial signs point to Miguel, being more than able to meet that challenge.
As former American Idol star Kelly Clarkson took the Grammy for Best Pop Vocal Album for her disc Stronger, the star gave a shout out to the R&B singer who had performed earlier on the CBS broadcast, saying, Miguel, I don't know who the hell you are, but we need to sing together. I mean, good God, that was the sexiest damn thing I've ever seen. For many, Miguel had already become a fixture on the urban music scene, but it was his animated performance at the 2013 Grammys that made the pop world stand up and take notice. In this film, you'll get up close and personal with a performer who is being tooted as the heir to the throne, occupied for decades by the original performer, recognized by one name, Prince. So pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and come backstage with us as we profile the life and times of Miguel, the man that so many are dubbing the heir to the throne. Miguel Jantel Pimentel, born October 23, 1985, in St. Pedro, California, who performs under the stage name Miguel, is an American recording artist, songwriter, and producer. Signed to Jive Records in 2007, Miguel released his debut album, All I Want Is You, in November of 2010. Although it was under-promoted and performed poorly upon its release, the album became a sleeper hit and helped Miguel garner commercial standing. After Jive's dissolution in 2011, he moved to RCA Records and released his second album, Kaleidoscope Dream, in 2012 to critical acclaim. Miguel Jantel Pimentel was born and raised in San Pedro, Los Angeles, California. He is one of two sons born to a Mexican father and an African-American mother. Miguel's parents divorced when he was eight years old. At a young age, Miguel was introduced to the older R&B his mother listened to and his father's musical tastes, including funk, hip-hop, jazz, and classic rock. At age five, Miguel wanted to become a dancer. However, at 13, he began pursuing a career in music. At 14, he was writing songs and developing ideas with a four-track recorder he took from his uncle. Oh man, I was talkative in class. I was always getting in trouble for talking to classmates. But I was a good kid, you know? Um, it was important to my mother and my father that I got good grades and, and I could only go to the studio if I, you know, kept my grades up. So it was, you know, it was kind of a win-win, you know? I kept my grades up and, and got to work. Man, growing up as a teenager, my first, my first job I cleaned pools for a summer. I was a pool cleaner. And that was actually a fun job. And I made pretty good money. That was, that was a good summer. Um, and then after that, like, I took on a steady job even throughout like, the school year as a tutor for this, um, for this tutoring company. And I tutored like, you know, kindergarten to 10th grade. And that was, that was a pretty, that was really cool watching kids like, you know, improve and whatnot. It was a, it was a good first job. But, you know, since then I, I was like a bank teller. Um, at my lowest, lowest point, I was an uh, extended car warranty salesman, and that was tough. That was tough, but, you know, you do what you gotta do. In ninth grade, Miguel was introduced by a mutual friend to a member of production company, Drop Squad, and he subsequently spent the rest of high school learning his way around a recording studio before seeking a record deal. Miguel signed a production deal with Drop Squad in 2000. In 2004, he was signed by independent record label Black Ice and started working on his studio album, Young and Free. It was scheduled to be released on November 30, 2006, but was ultimately shelved. Black Ice released the single, Get Your Hands Up, with a video debut on 106 and Park, but Miguel decided to change his sound and image and walked away from Black Ice Records. He later said in an interview for LA Weekly, We shot a video, and if you ever see it, you will laugh your ass off. I have a fitted hat on and a white t-shirt and baggy jeans. I was 19 years old and was the first time anyone had ever given me money.
For nearly a year, Miguel's manager at the time submitted several songs to music mogul Mark Pitts. After receiving a song titled, Sure Thing, which Miguel described as a highly personal record that no one was ever supposed to hear, Pitts scheduled a meeting with Miguel in October 2007. The following month, Miguel signed a recording contract with Jive Records. Miguel recalled that the signing of his contract took place in a very small room in a very small office, in a small corner of the building at Jive. After being signed, he recorded his debut album, All I Want Is You, but was sued by Black Ice for breach of contract. Consequently, his album was not released for two years. That album was a huge learning experience. I left the marketing of my album and me as an artist up to the discretion of the label. They marketed me like the typical R&B artist, which I can't really blame them for. But that's what they know. But that's not what my lifestyle was. For the following three years, he contributed to Usher's Here I Stand and Raymond vs. Raymond, as well as Asher Roth's Asleep in the Bread Isle and Music Soul Child's If You Leave. Miguel also released Mischief, the mixtape. He explained that the title referred to his attempt to tell people that there is an alternative to getting sort of the same thing. After his protracted contract dispute with Black Ice was settled, All I Want Is You was released in November 2010. It initially performed poorly, debuting at number 109 on the Billboard 200 on 11,000 copies sold, and was underpromoted by Jive amid the label's dissolution. Man, first big check, I'll be honest with you, I blew it on legal fees, man. I, I, I spent all my money on legal fees. Um, and that's when I kind of like went broke again. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was like literally in a matter of a month and a half, dude. It was, it was kind of lame, but um, you know, here we are. Most important is finding what you're passionate about. Finding what you truly love, you know? And starting from there, because there's a saying in the Bible, right? Um, Faith without works is dead. But it's the same principle. You can know that you love something, but if you don't apply yourself and do it, it kind of doesn't mean anything, you know what I mean? So it takes that extra step of pursuing your passion and living it. And that's a lot easier said than done, man, because there's so many people who have to provide, you know, for themselves, for their families, and so on and so forth. And it hinders them from pursuing their dreams or their goals or, and whatnot. So I know how hard that can be, but um, I think that's where true success kind of really comes from, you know? Um, not only economically, but I'm saying as human beings, you know what I'm saying? Personal success, like self-accomplishment, feeling accomplished and feeling fulfilled comes from knowing your passion and pursuing it. And I think um, hard work to accompany that, you know what I mean, is, is just, you can't lose, man. Uh, my name is James Kidd. I'm performing tonight as well. I'm an opening act for Tank. And uh, what I'm working on right now is my project. Um, it's called it's called Guarantee. So I'm working on that. I have a single coming out here soon. So, you know, that's just me, you know. My dream collaboration would definitely be Miguel. That is, that is, that is the best one, I think. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I just like his style. You know everything that he brings to the table. You know the style, the music. Oh, uh, you can check me out on Instagram, YouTube, and it's all your boy kid. The album's title track attained radio play while Miguel toured as a supporting act for Trey Songs and Usher. Its following two singles, Sure Thing and Quickie, performed well under the charts. After falling off the chart for three weeks, All I Want Is You became a sleeper hit as it re-entered the Billboard 200 and climbed to the chart for 22 weeks before peaking at number 37 on May 14, 2011. It ultimately spent 45 weeks on the chart and sold 404,000 copies in the U.S. From 2012 to present, label change, second album, and controversy. After Jive was shut down and absorbed by RCA Records, Miguel was moved to RCA, where Pitts was named president of Urban Music and received a new marketing team. His second studio album, Kaleidoscope Dream, was released on October 2, 2012 to critical acclaim. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200, selling 71,000 copies in its first week. As of February 2013, Kaleidoscope Dream had sold 322,000 copies according to Nielsen SoundScan. 
In February 2013, he released a politically driven video for the song, Candles in the Sun, the 11th and last song on the album. In August 2013, the new single Beautiful with Mariah Carey became Miguel's third million seller in the USA, following Sure Thing and Adorn. During an energetic performance of Adorn at the Billboard Music Awards on May 19th, Miguel failed in an attempt to leap across the stage, injuring two audience members in the process. Barely missing the stage, Miguel landed on two women, hooking his right leg over one and knocking the other into the stage. The incident became an immediate internet sensation and has been satirized in numerous internet memes and gifs. It has also been the subject of controversy, with the show's producers claiming that they had denied the singer permission to attempt the leap, while Miguel's representatives have countered that no objections were raised during earlier rehearsals. Kiari Shaw, one of the two women involved, had since claimed she had suffered a traumatic head injury that was not sufficiently attended to by show organizers. Right now R&B is filled with so many people singing songs that sound like other songs. But Miguel is letting his art rule his whole flow, and that's the best place for an artist to be. To me he kind of feels like Prince, where he's doing this eclectic blend, but still coming back to focus songs. Miguel identifies himself as part of the new wave of R&B artists that include Frank Ocean, The Weeknd, and Al Farner. About.com editor Mark Edward Nero characterizes his music as eclectic, artsy R&B pop. Miguel cites musicians Prince, David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, Freddie Mercury, Phil Collins, Donny Hathaway, The Notorious B.I.G., and Kanye West as influences in addition to expressing his admiration for Stevie Wonder, John Lennon, and Diane Warren. Miguel revealed his desire to have worked with James Brown, who he considers the last innovator for me when it comes to soul. In addition to singing, Miguel also plays the guitar. Miguel incorporates R&B, funk, hip-hop, rock, and electronic styles into his music. Miguel described his sound as nostalgic in a sense that it's familiar. It's shocking, edgy, energizing. In an interview with Paper Magazine, he regarded his music as fly, funkadelic, intergalactic, hip-hop meets sexy, orgasmic, crazy, dope shit. Miguel is often compared to Babyface and Prince. His vocals are influenced by classic rock bands such as The Beatles, Queen, The Police, and Def Leppard. Brian McManus of The Village Voice writes that Marvin Gaye, Prince, and his comparison, Van Morrison, all linger in his voice. Some of the things I love about Miguel are, I mean, I think it's, first of all, I think it's really cool how he's half Mexican and half African American because I love mixed people in the entertainment industry. I mixed myself, so I think it's really cool when there's different heritages in the industry. It just adds a little bit of flavor. And, um, oh, and his birthday is coming up October 